Yeah, all right, Aria Masuti, Trevor DeGroat, Emily Peters, our entire ACC Network extra crew from the Seminole Soccer Complex, Alabama, 4-0 over Jacksonville State on Thursday night. Florida State needed 89 minutes, but Clara Robbins delivered the final blow for a 1-0 win over number nine, Texas A&M. And it's turned down for what? Plays over the speakers here at the Soccer Complex. We're ready to turn up for the Knowles and the Tide. West Hart in his seventh season, 52 and 51. Florida State's Mark Krikorian, 290 wins in Tallahassee, just 10 away from the 300 milestone. Trevor, it should be a fun one here today. We expect Florida State to possess, but Alabama's gonna pick and choose their spots. A couple years ago, matter of fact, 2017. Trevor, the only time these two teams met, Alabama won, Florida State nil, a top 10 upset for the Tide. Yep, just needed one goal, and you know, Coach Hart said that a lot of things went their way that day, and you know, that's exactly sometimes what you need. It's maybe not the best team wins every time in soccer. Maybe it's just that one opportunity that just slips past and one mistake could doom a team as well. But it's going to be uh, interesting to see where uh, Alabama, how they match up against Florida State's quality. They are the number one team in the country for a reason. They have depth all over the place and talent all over the place. Uh, Yuji Zhao, just the brilliance on the ball, gets it to Robbins, her first action today. Over to the gold medal winner herself, Gabby Carl. Slips it through, that is beautiful from Carl. Now inside the middle of the box, some hesitation between Beata Olsen, I believe, and Jenna Nyswanger, and the ball is cleared out. And that's something that this Seminole team, Trevor's gonna work on, is they're gonna have possession, but it's about interlocking in the final third to find the answer to be able to put the ball in the back of the net. Yeah, it took him a little bit of time against Texas A&M to really find that offensive rhythm. Now, they were able to get quite a few corners. They were able to get a bit deep, but they weren't a lot in the box. And so that early opportunity inside the 18 is a good, uh, a good rhythm for Florida State here early on. Florida State. Outshot Texas A&M 14-2 on Thursday night. Ten shots came after the first 45 minutes in the second half. It seemed like the Seminoles found something they liked on the left flank, getting the ball to Christina Lynch. And her service into the middle of the box. Uh, the Knowles had a couple of chances. Jenna Nyswanger off the crossbar. Uh, Beata Olsen, a, sa a tip save onto the crossbar that might have been a goal. Uh, our VAR could not find an uh, undisputable shot to get that decision made for the head official, but then finally Clara Robbins puts it in. Krikorian told us, hey, I think we could have put four or five on Texas A&M on Thursday night. And with a tight turnaround from Thursday to Sunday, obviously conditioning gonna be a, a bit of a concern. Emily's got more. Turnaround from Thursday night's match to this afternoon, I sat down with Coach Krikorian who walked me through the Seminoles' recovery and preparation process. He told me Thursday night was all about the cold tubs and a good night's rest, which included a sleep in until their 11 o'clock call time Friday morning. They spent the day reviewing their season opener and taking care of their bodies. And when I spoke to him with on Sunday, Saturday, excuse me, the team had been out for a walkthrough, some final preparations, and just finished eating lunch. And Aria today, coach told me, is all about the hydration. Yeah, Emily looks like Gabby Carl's plenty hydrated as she puts the ball in. Pollinger oh, spilled it just for a second. Hesitation and nervous moments for the former Seminole keeper, but there is Gabby Carl Trevor. And when we talked to Coach Krikorian uh, alongside Emily on, on Thursday, or excuse me, on Saturday, we talked to him. Uh, he said having Gabby Carl back was huge because of the experience she got in Tokyo. Yeah, I mean, they spent much of the preseason training without her, obviously, over in Tokyo, winning a gold medal with Canada. Kind of, yeah, that's kind of important, so it doesn't get any bigger than on that stage. But yeah, Gabby certainly brings an element of, of, comfortability she has the experience not just here but now the international experience is immensely helpful with legends uh, on that uh, Canada roster so that was a huge experience for her and she brings back a lot of mo a lot of uh, a lot of pedigree now being a part of that Olympic roster and that gold medal team yes yeah, 79th career start here today for Gabby Carl in a seminal uniform here's a quick touch from Olsen out to the right side Bissell has it on the right the, the English national team member herself dumps it over to Yuji Zhao the Chinese national team now Bissell wants a service, plays it into the middle of the box. It's cleared away. And Bama playing with the ball in the back. Dangerous concept there. They are able to finally clear it away. And now for Alabama, who 4-0 over Jacksonville State on Thursday. They move to 11-0 all-time against their in-state foe. 25 shots against the Gamecocks of Jacksonville State. 81% 
of the possession belong to the Crimson Tide. That's not going to happen here today against Florida State. No, but they're also a very good, accurate team, Aria. So they actually do hit the ball square on goal quite a bit. So they have very talented players that can identify where the goal is and they can put it on net. So if they get one opportunity, they could give Mia Justice, who's making her first start today, a little bit of uh, a little bit of trouble potentially if they get a good look. Strong work by Flynn Robbins. Can she get onto the ball? She does, and she takes a spill. Head official today is Andy Boyle. Momentarily gave advantage, and then did blow the whistle. Quick restart for FSU. Carl, one-on-one, -on -one, 1v1. Oh, how about that? Gets to her preferred left foot, plays it inside, cutting it off. Beautifully was a Bama defender. I believe that was Bella Scottero. Now what can Florida State do with this possession here? Inside the 18, service to the middle, deflected and knocked away. Cleared out by Macy Clem. It's an Alabama team who went seven, eight, and two last season. Drop back to Zhao on her left foot, clipped up ahead, running onto it, nice longer. Bollinger against her former teammate, gets to the turf and makes a great save. That's a beautiful save by Bollinger, recognizing how deep the ball was towards the corner of the six, and nice longer was even able to put a foot on it, but the closing speed by Bollinger and that big body of hers does a nice job and still is able to gather it without a reaction and uh, the ball getting away. Just take a look, just a beautiful touch by Zhao, run on by Nicewanger. But Bollinger just doing an excellent job of just closing the gap. Nicewanger had no chance. And you got to think Bollinger knows uh, some of the combo plays and the tendencies having been in that net for quite a few years for Florida State. She is a graduate transfer. And as Emily mentioned early on, she was a part of that national championship team for Florida State just a couple of years ago. And she certainly proved herself worthy in, in being in that starting role in 2018, Aria, that led to a national championship for the Seminoles, but got injured as the postseason got underway. But obviously, Florida State, you know, doesn't usually allow their goalkeepers to really have too much work. They do control a lot. And you see, one save versus Jacksonville State. This is her first game since last fall. So it's going to be an interesting day for her with how much work she's going to be receiving. Might be the biggest workload of her career. And Trevor, you and I were talking about this before the broadcast started, and, and really with Mark Krikorian too. There's so much competition at Florida State on that back line. They've had so many incredible players. I could name, you know, uh, on multiple hands. I need multiple hands to be able to tell you those. Bollinger, she lost her starting spot, not because of inability, but because she got injured. And then Caroline Jeffers kind of took the bull by the horns. And since then, Jeffers also lost her starting spot to Roque, who we see Mia Justice in today. And there's just too much talent on this back in the Seminole keeper line. And sometimes, you know, you just lose your spot. But Bollinger found an opportunity she liked not too far away, and now she's uh, the head keeper in Tuscaloosa. And when you have a, a good connection with a former assistant coach of yours who's now running the show at Alabama, it's kind of an easy fix right there to get your opportunity elsewhere. And that's what, uh, you know, Wes Hart decided to do, no, noticing that, you know, Bollinger was a very capable and quality keeper, and she's getting her opportunity in her first start in the Crimson. And I think we'll show it a little bit later on in this broadcast, but there was a moment in Bollinger's career where she came on after a red card that Jeffers received against the Florida Gators a few years back, a penalty kick. Cold turkey right onto the line, and she saves a penalty. Florida State ends up winning that game 2-1. to one. An incredible moment for Bollinger and for the Seminoles as they extended their win streak over their rivals. No question, one of the highlights of her career, making that, state, making that save against your rival. That just shows it's a big moment she can come through. Is this a big moment for Florida State? That's a really good ball from Bissell. Nice Walker running onto it, touches it back for Robbins. A bit heavy, but Robbins has space, chases it down. That was a necessary touch, though, from Nice Walker to just keep possession and keep the ball in this half. Carl looking for an angle onto her left, gets around the corner. Well done by Carl. And then Alabama quick to the line and quick off their line to get to the ball. Here is Allie Burke, her first action today, Atlanta, Georgia native. And the Seminole faithful love the physicality and the tenaciousness that FSU plays with. Yeah, approaching 10 minutes into this first half, and there's the first mistake between Howell and Flynn. They get a chance for Alabama to actually be in Florida State's half of the field. Flynn, number eight, from Arlington, Virginia, five foot six sophomore, playing now in her 16th career game. 
put together a full 90 against Texas A&M the other night. And the center back duos for FSU continue to shift and change over the years. The last season in the NCAA tournament, FSU found something they liked with Flynn and Madrill. And that partnership continues here into 2021. As you see students filing back into Tallahassee with classes starting tomorrow, a, a faithful soccer community in the capital city of Florida. Great crowd on hand on this hot day in the 8-5-0. Now what can Alabama do with it? A turn onto the right foot of 25 Burke. And it does not really trouble me a justice. Beautiful play by Sarepka. Megging one of FSU's defenders to get that opportunity. And that's something that Alabama just has to work at today against Florida State. When they do have the ball, they have got to connect passes, work some interplay or combination play just to get a couple of little things going momentum-wise and find some open space to run and get towards the 18. And we mentioned early on last meeting, these two teams, it was the only meeting. 1-0 in favor of Alabama. A goal by Taylor Morgan in the 55th minute against Dana Castellanos as Knowles. It was the first top 10 win ever for the Crimson Tide. Later, though, Wes Hart would notch an even bigger win, top five against Texas A&M. And there's no doubt Wes Hart has this thing going in the right direction. Krikorian told us that, you know, it took about 10 years before I was able to fully find and, and put this, this, this program into autopilot. And what happened in that 10th year? They won a national title. Yeah. I mean, that's just what it takes sometimes. You have to go and figure out what works. You're learning as you go in a lot of ways. And the SEC is getting a little tougher at the same time, Ari. I mean, you got a great Texas A&M team like we've mentioned already. Arkansas is a very good program. Vanderbilt's proven their worth. There's a lot of good quality teams in the SEC. So West Hart's really trying to come through. And of course, can't forget about Auburn. They're a very good quality team as well, who Florida State will see later this year, as will the, the Tide. So there's a lot of work to be done. But yeah, they do have some good quality players and trying to get more internationals helps too. Without a doubt, Florida State. Maybe the bell cow in college soccer for international play. 10 countries represented, including the United States. Now here's Carl, one of those internationals from Canada. Of course, it was the Great White North winning over Sweden in the Olympic gold medal game. A thrilling penalty kick shootout to give Christine Sinclair kind of the icing on the cake of a great career. They throw one by Alabama. About 13, 14 minutes into this ball game. Pretty good Still no school. Pretty good pursuit by Alabama, trying to at least not let Florida State work their way back to control the pace of play. Their forwards are high up, so they're trying to see if they can disrupt Florida State's flow of working with the ball to reset the pace. That one just out of the reach of Cat Rogers, 15. There's a shot of Macy Clem on the SEC preseason watch list, number two from Conifer, Colorado. Carl, and now Howell. Flynn. And you notice something here for Alabama, Ari, is that they have their wingers on the outside playing more as if it's a 5-3-2 versus a 3-5-2. And that's Jessica Skorka and Reyna Reyes out there. So they they can be aggressive. They can go up and score and shoot, especially Reyes in particular, the Mexican national team player. But they're going to be on their heels, and it makes it a little bit tougher for FSU to get wide. Intended for Olsen. Now Olsen has another chance on her right foot. Now Zhao is the flag. flag stays down. No flag went up right at the last second. Some hesitation from the line judge. But the flag did indeed go up and Zhao's going to be stopped. We take a look at it here, Trevor. Just a mishap by Clem. Nice swung her in the right position as she tried to clear. Olsen working to her right. And Zhao just off sides, but good presence by Bollinger just in case Zhao was on side. Just narrowing that window for Zhao to put a quality shot on. Carl battling Reyes, the Mexican international. Four caps with the senior national team for Mexico. 
for Reyes, who can also play in the center midfield, which I believe is where she actually gets most of her time with the Mexican national team. She kind of flip back and forth as an outside backer. So this is kind of in her natural position in a lot of ways, Aria. You see her up towards the bottom of your screen. So on that outside back or as a wing, she can do a lot of fluidity and a lot of mix-ups there, working as a defender, then quickly going back up on the attack. Physicality from Howell. Leading the charge as Florida State earns the ball back. Here is the senior. Square pass to Flynn. Flynn doesn't like what she sees forward, so she'll dump it back to the safety valve. Madrill, who is also a versatile player, was a striker in high school, played outside back for Florida State for her first season in Tallahassee. Battled numerous ACL injuries and has found her way in the center back position. Here's Flynn. Nice swanger shows for her. In the end, Florida State not able to connect passes, multiple passes together. But that high press, Trevor, continues to really, we talked about it with Mark Krikorian and he agreed. It's like a boa constrictor. They, they really squeeze the life out of you up in your defensive half. No question about it. And I think with Bama, you know, you kind of see they're kind of thin in terms of they're all behind the ball, but they're stretched out thin. I think Florida State can really work over the top potentially if they can get behind because that's a five back line at the moment. Robbins, numbers behind the ball for Alabama. You can see them closing down those gaps. Florida State's objective will be to open up. Just these little molecules of space if they can. It's just so difficult trying to find a teammate. You're going to have to have some movement, but that also wastes your energy, which is not something Florida State likes to do. They like to, they like to be the one to put the energy and make you waste energy at the same time. It's just going to be tough to find pockets of space the way the tide are lined up at this moment. Robbins gets to her right foot, plays across inside, Zhao glancing header. I just wanted the post. What a ball from Robbins. And Zhao went airmailing into the air. Just skimmed it across the forehead, didn't, didn't get there in time to put it square. Came in flying, Robbins doing a nice job working her way back. Good curl on it. Zhao just needed to be a little bit more on the six yard line. And she would have had herself a goal. Uh, you got to do better, I think, if you're Zhao there. That ball was picture perfect. You're not going to find yourself that much more open four yards from the net. And again, that's something Florida State's got to work on. Mark Corian seemed uh, maybe not frustrated, but uh, definitely a little concerned about how against Texas A&M on Thursday, Florida State had opportunities. And the difference when you have the possession, if you can find ways to finish, it completely breaks down the shape of whatever game plan the defensive team throws at you. Yeah, they had four corners in that first half against the Aggies, Ari, and not, not, not a whole lot of them really were that good quality in terms of putting the ball on the net. In fact, they only had one shot in that first half that was registered, and that was off the shot by Bissell towards the, the end of that first half. Let's do, do a little bit better job of just finding that spot and just going up and committing and trying to find the angles. Easier said than done, but they're certainly capable. Nice swanger to Carl. Carl's on her left. What can she do with it now? Right foot curler, back post. Bollinger got her mitts on it. It's a corner for Florida State. But the athleticism apparent from the former Seminole, Brooke Bollinger in net. Carl thought she might have had one there in the back post. Yeah, she had all the room in the world here on the left side, but decided to go back into her right foot. Certainly had, a, had the room for it. Needed a lot of bend. Could have gone in, potentially, and but, uh, but Bollinger was not going to leave that to chance. It'll be nice, Swanger. Prefers her left foot. It'll be an in-swinging ball towards the six-yard box. Howell rises, puts the ball in the net. Loose ball, dangerous moments, and another corner for Florida State, last touched by a player in Crimson. Howell giving the thumbs up, had to work her way well outside the six to find that ball. That's the one That's the one player they go to is number six. You know, we've already seen her elevate so high. That's what she's known for on these set pieces. So be sure to go to her again here. It'll be Zhao this time. 
from the opposite corner flag. Plays it into the box. Bollinger punches it out. Another corner for Florida State. <laughs> you see Robbins and Bollinger, Robbins. <laughs> former teammates, having a little bit of a laugh. Like I see you right there. You're not getting this header. <laughs> Just a punch out. Robbins didn't have a shot too tall for her. Bollinger with that height, it's just so tough to get her. If you put the ball on her, it's probably going to get punched out. Nice Wonger once more with the left foot. Curling in, Bollinger. Ball's loose, went into the back of the net. Florida State finds the opening goal in Tallahassee today. Trevor will have to see who they credit that to. It was nice, Swanger. But a great way of eliminating that advantage that Bollinger has with their height is to put traffic out in front. And Bollinger, I think it's an old goal. I think she punched it from back right yeah. into the net. So this is probably going to be a credit. Yes, Bollinger's right mitt punches it right back into the net. So that'll be a credit to Jenna Nicewanger. But obviously the traffic in front had a factor right there, had an impact on Bollinger not being able to get it out the way she wanted. So an error by Bollinger leads to Florida State going up 1-0. So FSU gets the first goal. Again, we've got to figure out what the official ruling will be. Right now they are crediting it to Jenna Nyswanger. And so we'll mark it down in the, at the moment as a Nyswanger goal. I think they're still deliberating in the Seminole press box to our left on what the official ruling will be, but by technicality, that is an own goal. It was Bollinger who punched it in. Either way, it doesn't matter for Florida State. They'll take a first half goal, something they could not find on Thursday night against Texas A&M, and now we'll see how Alabama responds. You just can't give Florida State too many chances that close to the net, whether it's set pieces or on runs and live ball situations. Eventually, they're going to cash in with that, with that amount of time being that close to the goal. How? Nice Wonger looking to slip it through. Wearing number five is Beata Olson. Jody Brown into the match for Florida State. Must have happened on the restart. And Heather Payne, the Irish international, also into the match for the Knowles. About 23 minutes to go in the first half. The Knowles able to find the first goal of this one. Off the corner kick. And we are getting official ruling now that it was an own goal by Brooke Bollinger. The ball sent in by Nyswanger from the corner flag. Bollinger punched it into her own net. Florida State one, Alabama nil. Reyes against Zhao. Rogers came to help. See on your screen, Bissell out of the game, as is Clara Robbins. Here is Brown. A nice it's job by away. Clem. Good tackle, just clearing it back up. Draws a foul by Florida State. Yeah, just a lot going to be dependent on Macy Clem. She really locks things down in the middle of that. Those center midfielders for the Tide. The question now becomes how much forward momentum and passing connectivity can the can the Tide really do? And you see right there off that last sequence, just. When you don't have that ball for that amount of time, you know, you, you're struggling, you're out of sync. You need to find a way to just put simple passes together. And so, so we get a timeout for, I think, hydration. And again, we did mention it is a scorching day here in Tallahassee. So we've got a hydration break. That means we'll step aside and we'll have more soccer right after this.
You see fans of all ages at the Seminole Soccer Complex here today. Just across the hall, across the pavilion, you saw uh, some softball camp going on for some high schools and travel ball teams with Lonnie Alameda's group. So a busy day at the Complex here in Tallahassee. Aria Masudi, Trevor DeGroat, and Emily Peters, our entire ACC Network Extra Crew, where we're in the middle of a hydration break. A bit of a homecoming for Wes Hart and Brooke Bollinger, former Seminoles. And Hart now in his seventh season, 52 wins in those seven years with the Crimson Tide. So far, Trevor, look, Florida State won, Alabama zero. The Knowles have dominated possession. And the Knowles did find that first half goal, which they did not find against A&M on Thursday night. Yeah, they were just able to, they've had better chances and more time around the 18, Ari, and inside the 18 as well versus Texas A&M. Coach Gary's team really does a nice job of playing any phase of the game that they wish and that they have to play. So it's something that Alabama didn't play really at all in their first game. They dominated possession around 80% against Jacksonville State. So they're going to have a complete role reversal here in this in this first half and that's the case of what it has been here in this first half they've just been on their heels have had no sense of offensive fluidity yet and as we restart you see 86 degrees today partly sunny it feels a whole lot hotter than that as carl this is an excellent ball she's gonna have a one-on-one -on -one opportunity cuts it back inside try to go to her left and it was well read by reyes The speed of Jody Brown right back on it, Trevor. You can see the coverage that Brown has, but you just see Reyes' technical quality there. That experience as an outside backer with the Mexican team really is showcasing itself right now. That's an excellent matchup. She's going to have to work her way back, calling for the offsides, and that's what she gets. Luckily, because Carl was on it. Could have had an opportunity to look for Heather Payne or Beata Olsen. But Reyes certainly is one of the more technically gifted and physical competitors on this Alabama roster. Here is Bama, a rare opportunity in Florida State's half. Going down, a whistle is called. Trip by Payne gives Alabama a chance to work the ball deep if they can connect some passes. Just see Florida State just so quick to just get back around the ball. This one harmlessly rolls over to Justice. Nia Justice, haven't said her name a whole lot. Getting her first start in a similar uniform in her career. The top high school goalkeeper in the country a year ago. And the cousin of former men's national team for the U.S. goalkeeper, Tim Howard. Doesn't really get more big time in terms of recognition in the soccer community within the United States than Tim Howard. Yeah, not too bad, right? Right after the match, go call your cousin for some advice. Well, she's in good hands with head coach Mark Krikorian for sure. And with the quality of play the FSU keepers have had. Great, great skill by Zhao, right through the legs. Right through Cat Rogers, the captain. Little nutmeg action. Now Howell, angling run towards the end line. Ball played through, it's still loose. Carl couldn't get on the end of it. Emergency defending by the Bama back line. Prevented goal number two. Excellent work on the wing by Heather Payne. Good service. And Beata Olsen with a touch as mass substitutions come in for the Knowles. But another quality chance for Florida State. Four substitutions for the Seminoles. And Olsen out. Nice swanger out. Carl out. Nesbeth, Lynch, hustle onto the field. as does number seven, Ronnie Y. Alagoa also in, so it just goes to show again, Florida State with all the depth that Mark Corey could have to really shift his roster by half 
throughout the course of the game. Yeah, Maria Miguel Pereira Alagoa from Portugal. Simply told, it's going to be Maria Alagoa going forward by the Florida State information staff. Here's EY. Pavlisko. That was Heather Payne from Castle Park, Ireland, number 12. And in your screen, a little gimpy. Made her Irish national team debut when she was just 17 years old. Yeah, she is uncomfortable to say the least. Looks like that left leg giving her some troubles. Oh, and Leilani Nesbeth hit the deck. Not the right way, almost doing the splits with the ball working away from her and Payne down on, on the pitch. And it looks to be a little more serious for Heather Payne. The Seminole training staff will head over. Payne did battle an uncomfortable injury in the offseason. A little bit in the preseason, had to miss uh, some extended action as the Knolls reconvened in the fall. So you're working the ball. It's a non-contact injury, which is not up. good. He rolled up on the grass underneath the cleats. That's never a good sign if it's a non-contact injury in particular. Just rolling that left ankle. And Trevor, she extends the line of Seminoles who have played for the Irish national team. Megan Campbell, Megan Connolly. You see there, oh, the ankle just kind of gave out. Just overstretched a little bit, and then her weight went forward on the pinky side of that left foot on the pinky toe. But jogging it off. Looks like she'll be able to keep it going. But it'll, it'll take off for the time being. Bollins are known for that big leg, Ari, and gives Alabama at least a chance in the attacking half. But once again, just got to string together a few passes to get some quality looks. It just hasn't happened yet. This one played forward. Good touch by Sanchez Correto. Another Mexican national teammate of Reyna Reyes. Those two have had some good chemistry. And a hard foul by Pavliska. Just want to go the other way now for Florida State. As Jessica Skorka, a versatile sophomore from Plano, Texas. Haven't said her name a ton today. Really, it's been all Florida State here in the first half. Kind of a sleepy match. It's well, been a lot of possession for FSU. A couple of chances to finish. The Knowles did force one in on a corner kick. Yeah, talking to Wes Hart ahead of this match, Ari, he said he doesn't want to say that Florida State lulls you to sleep, but that's something he, he notices that they will keep you on your heels, and then if you're not all together, you know, going back the other way, you better wake up fast because you got to be on the ball, and you better value the ball when you have it because it's going to be few and far opportunities if you're not careful. Yeah, Wes Hart, an All-American in his playing days at Washington. First team All-American, 99. Spent some time also in Madison with Wisconsin of the Big Ten before a playing career of nearly 100 games in the MLS with the San Jose Earthquakes and the Colorado Rapids. The 
shots favor the Knowles right now, 5 nothing. This ball a bit heavy from EY to Payne. Seven on your screen, EY from Tokyo, Japan. And a couple of substitutions now for Alabama. Riley Tanner and Brooke Steer are already in the game. Leah Kundi coming in, who had a goal against Jacksonville State, number 22. They've also just put in Madison Schott, defender number 14. A great dispossession there by Florida State's 18, Maria Alagoa. Madrill. Senior to a sophomore, Flynn. Alagoa looking for Lynch. Pass intercepted by Reyes. Yeah, it's tough to really find some work over there on the left side. Florida State's really been working the wings quite a bit. The left side a little bit more difficult given how good of a player Reyes is. She's been showing good quality here, staying keeping in pace with the likes of Gabby Carl and now Christina Lynch. Lynch, another player, Trevor, who's battled injury in her career. Nasty ACL injury against USF in the NCAA tournament a few years back. Has worked her way onto the pitch again and has been dynamite for the Seminoles for two seasons. Yeah, she had the game-winning goal in the ACC tournament that year, Aria, and so when you go into that, that championship run and and unfortunately lose yourself to injury, it's quite tough, but she has definitely worked her way back and contributed quite a bit and very nicely against Texas A&M to try and find opportunities on that left side. Here's a chance here, Alagoa, beautiful! <laughs> Upper 90, Dan D, 2 now Florida State, the Portuguese International's first career goal in time. <laughs> I think Alagoa surprised herself with how that one got in. But she shouldn't be. She didn't score 22 goals in the senior division of Portugal for nothing. Just the service from Flynn right in the middle. Well outside the 18, about 25 yards and snipes it. Bollinger, even with her length, cannot get a hand on it. What a highlight real goal for Maria Alagoa, 2-0 FSU. And that is how you introduce yourself in your first season with a new ball club. Bama quickly on the other end. That'll roll out. Sense of urgency now for the Tide. Deepest they've been in this match. I mean, just an incredible strike. Well, how about this move? The flag went up. Play will stop. That was really good, though, by Bama. And for Alagoa from Portugal, not only an excellent soccer player, but can play the saxophone and the guitar. Well, we, 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 didn't, we, didn't, we didn't say Florida State was versatile for just their soccer, did we? Right. Because they have talent all over the place and multiple different subjects and activities. <laughs> she, hey, she was tuning up the band for that one, though. Jody Brown running on. That is really good ball. Brown stops on a dime, lays it off to EY. EY thought about having a shot from distance. Instead, dumps it out, gets the ball back towards the end line, play, plays it across. Oh, the Knowles almost had three. Nesbeth, the Bermudan, got a toe onto it. Macy Clem right there, though, was the only line of defense with Bollinger out of position near the post. But obviously she had to be there to take that initial shot. And 
And Bama needs to just take a rest for just a moment, Ari. I mean, they're just trying to get themselves settled. They still got a little over 10 minutes left in this half. They have to stop the bleeding, keep this a two-goal game, or try to try and work their way up back to the other side to see if they can close the gap in half. Here's Flynn. Ball found the foot of Brown. Brown angling her way through, could not find the final touch. And now Bama trying to play direct. Reyes runs onto it. Great awareness by Reyes. He had four or five Seminoles around the ball. Excellent job to come out of position and to keep possession with her teammates. That's a veteran instinct move right there. Justice quick off her line, does well. But Madrill now. And that one skirts just wide. Nervous moments for Florida State. You got to watch it twice, right, Trevor? It's too good to see just once. Just pulls up from distance. She just uh -oh. doesn't have a challenge. And she, if you have a clear view of the goal and you have the capability, just take the shot. And that's what, exactly what Maria Alagoa did. And just another one of these freshmen. You know, we have a lot of, there's a lot of players on this roster that have made impacts as a freshman. Heather Payne scored in her first career game as a freshman for Florida State. Heather, I mean, Jalen Howells had an impact. Christina Lynch had an impact as a freshman. So freshmen are going to get chances to play for Mark Krikorian's team, and they will make impacts. And not much better how you can do it right there than what Maria Alagoa just did. What do you think, SE top 10 nominee? I mean, we, we got to submit that up to Bristol, and let's see if the, the producers in the booth in the control room will help, help with that, I would imagine so. Now Nesbeth dumps it inside. Does Alagoa have a chance for two? Oh, I want it to be unselfish. Go right back to Nesbeth. I think her head coach is going to want her to put that one on goal again. Uh, maybe she just maybe she wanted to go back to the right foot. Maybe that's the next phase of the development. See if you can get the left foot working. Because she had all, all sorts of daylight. The only thing there was Bollinger to prevent her. Got to tee one up for the left foot sometimes. Howell. Chips it inside. This header, a Bollinger to Nesbeth. The flag was up. Goal will not count. You can see the hope. Left the eyes of every, every attacker in white for FSU, which usually means the flag goes up. How with the excellent service to get it across for Christina Lynch, but she's the one called offside. Boy, if she was just a little bit behind, I mean, that's probably an easy goal for Nesbeth. If you're Bollinger, you just got to start making sure you don't allow any rebounds. You have got to put your hands on the ball, snag that thing, protect it like it's like it's your egg and you're the mama bird. EY slips it up ahead, through ball. Nesbeth running on, Bollinger does well. Quickly off her line, gets to the turf. I should guess it gets to the Bermuda grass. Nesbitt's the Bermuda. Now they're international. Just internationals all over the place. And Leilani Nesbitt made a big impact in the ACC tournament last season with a goal and three assists. Definitely has a nose for the goal. She's looking for one here in these final six, seven minutes. Drill. And now Justice. Florida State's put two across here in the first 45. Six minutes left until the locker room break. FSU has not lost a non-conference game here in Tallahassee. In the regular season, I should say, since 2014. Here is Brown running onto the ball. Pushed out wide to Payne. Payne plays it across. This one just on the outside of the net. Ball got locked in on the side netting. Payne once again finding a lot of space on the outside. Brown with the service. Goes off shot. So another corner for the Seminoles. Bollinger's been active. 
here in the first half. We were, we were getting when This is probably going to be the busiest workload she's had in her career. And she's getting the test today. She's going to have to come up big once again. In swinging ball, Brown corrals. Just outside the 18, over to Nesbeth. Oh, Nesbeth just lost focus. And you see Florida State will be honoring Bobby Bowden with those patches on the left side of the shoulder. All season, the legend, one of the great coaches in college football history passing away this month earlier. It'll be interesting to see how Florida State's football program chooses to honor Bobby Bowden. That season just a couple of weeks away. Well, that'll be a stage certainly all to themselves because it'll be on a Sunday night before NFL football season starts. Of course, that'll be on prime time, and they're going to go all out for the coach who really built not just you know the football team but really set the path for athletics and really – a lot of the entire university was built on off of his his shoulders, and he was such an influential figure. Obviously, the impact he made and the commitment he had as a man of faith, family, and football in that order. But he meant so much to so many people in Tallahassee and around the world. Brown's been really good in center midfield for Florida State, withholding. Now Lynch, she has a go. It's deflected. EY, Payne, edge of the 18. Now open up just an inch of space if she can. And a physical foul by Bama's number 12, Riley Tanner, the graduate transfer from South Carolina. I still yeah, Tanner picked up a yellow card in their game against Jacksonville State, so she's a very physical left side winger and left footed at that. One of many grad seniors on this Alabama roster, Aria. They have a lot of experience. In swinging ball. Jumps through the first line of defenders. In fact, I believe they have five graduates. So there's a lot of experience on this roster that's looking for more opportunities and trying to find a way to make an impact here this season. They try to navigate their way through, obviously, their non-conference here first, but then getting prepped for SEC competition. And Trevor, the, the only year that they've made the NCAA tournament for Alabama under Coach Hart was in 2017 when they knocked off Florida State. That's a big resume win for sure, and that definitely grabbed their attention. And it's difficult. They've had some pretty good seasons in between that time. They've been close a handful of times. Just got to do a little bit better in the SEC tournament. I think if you can do good in the playoffs when you're one of those bubble-like teams, you just got to prove yourself worthy in those those kind of games and those one and dones. Yeah, this could be the season, as you mentioned. The transfer portal really a, a staple now in sports and the collegiate game all around. And that's a, that's a way you can quickly improve a team from one year to the next. Not sure that's something sustainable that you want to do as a, a program identity. However, for teams like Alabama looking to make that jump from one year over to the next, could be a bit of a safety valve when you lose some talent. Here's Howell. Turns, has time to dissect, finds Nesbeth. Payne was making a run. Nesbeth had her back to her. And how about that back heel? To Pavlisko, played across and deflected another corner for Florida State. It'll be the sixth of the first half. Yeah, Florida State, it's just a beautiful back heel, as you said, Ari, and to allow Florida State even more time on that deep right side. They've really been having their way over on the wing, deep into that part of the field near the scoreboard. Nesbeth out swinging, low line driving ball. Second in a row from Nesbeth. I mean, she just hasn't been able to get it towards the box, or the six, I should say, for a teammate to have a chance. Dispossessed by Reyes. And now I think they've switched Reyes over to that side, knowing how much 
how successful Florida State has been having their way over there to get that much quality time of possession. Final seconds of the first half where Florida State finds the net twice. Bama still looking for an answer here. They only have one shot registered. And Trevor, the first 45, all Florida State. I think Krikorian's going to be a little bit more pleased with the way his team finished the chances from that possession in the first half. Yeah, they've just been able to get deeper down towards the goal and towards the end line. Like, they, and they have, they didn't have those opportunities as much. Texas A&M such a very good team on defense. But Alabama just hasn't been able to match up in deep. I mean, you just take a look at the corner statistics there, Aria. Five corners for Florida State and three in a row, and which led to the first goal, with the own goal, by Brooke Bollinger. So that was definitely the key, at least, to put the pressure on. And so that really set a tone for the entire first half. And then they were able to get a little bit more flexible, still work the outside. And then Alagoa just tees one up from long range. And a change in net for Alabama. Brooke Bollinger out of the game. McKinley Crone, last season's starter for the Crimson Tide. Maitland, Florida native, back in her home state. She's in the net. The transfer from Oklahoma now in her second season with Bama. Yeah, she got the start in the first game against Jacksonville State, and Brooke Bollinger took over for the second, and that's something that Coach Hart has been thinking about, maybe sharing time between the two of these high-quality keepers. Last season, five shutouts for the Crimson Tide. Had a save on opening night against Jacksonville State and battled a knee injury a couple of years ago. Coach Hart said, look, she was finally healthy last year going into preseason. Uh, this year, well, we, we expect her to take another step forward, and we asked him, what's going to be the keeper situation? He said, we'll kind of play it by ear. Have healthy competition until we settle on somebody. Out swinging ball, header popped into the air, and over the crossbar, and everyone. A goal kick for Bama. Yeah, welcome to the game. <laughs> right within the first minute, Florida State with a set piece opportunity, just a cross opportunity, and McKinley just needing to be in the right place. Luckily, the ball goes over the crossbar, but think about her as she has good composed feet and can really do a good job of distributing the ball. She wants to go long range here to restart things. This one knotted down. A good good work pass. by Bama. Yeah, Tanner. Knocked into the air. That's what you need. That's what Alabama needs. They need a few of those here to start this first half to get back into this game. They just need to work the ball, get your players, have some good accurate passes, whether it's on the pitch or in the air. You just got to find a good couple sequences here. They'll be able to go deep here to start things off here in the third minute of play. Wes Hart was excited about Riley Tanner's addition from South Carolina because of her ability 1v1. Now Alabama with a chance. Shot blocked. Nice job closing in by Nicewanger. This is much better from Alabama. Forcing the issue just a little bit into Florida State's defensive third. And Wes Hart said it. I mean, they have a sense of urgency. They got to get higher and and get deeper, and that's that's what you see here. They understand the task at hand. Down two goals in Tallahassee is almost as, is pretty much as tough as it gets in all of college soccer. Tanner, still Tanner, onto her right, goes down, clipped, and a foul called. The spot will be about 22 yards away from the goal. And so for Alabama, a set piece chance. And Wes Hart's got to like how his team's come out of the gate. Oh, no doubt about it. As you see, Riley Tanner working her way to the right. Nicewanger was on her. I don't know if there was a pull of the jersey, but it's a set piece opportunity. About 28 yards from the net. So Mia Justice might be seeing her first save of the day. And will it be Clem or will it be Rogers? Rogers. 
runs over the ball. It'll be Clem. Puts into the back post. Justice called into action. Easy catch for the freshman. Timing by, look like Tana Sanchez Carreto coming in there on the far side to try and maybe put a header on it. Ball just missing and Justice asserting herself to make the catch before a chance on the head could be made. Long ball Robbins. from Michelle. What a ball. Robbins is through. Her shot wide of the far post. Robbins had the look for her second goal of the season. Just a beautiful ball, as you said, Aria. Nobody there. I think Robbins let the ball get way too far out in front of her, and I think if she just runs onto that ball sooner, she'll have a better angle on the goal and probably doesn't overextend herself. Robbins' seventh career goal came on Thursday night against Texas A&M. Interesting story that Clara Robbins is versatile, has played on the back line, has played in the center midfield. Really didn't get a chance to showcase her offensive ability until her junior year after she came back from an ACL injury. And last year she broke out in the spring with six goals. It was the ACC tournament most valuable player. Coming into the year, she said, look, uh, we, we've got to each try to get better individually, but collectively as a team, we, we feel like we know each other well, and you see that in the tombstone. The team leader in goals and assists getting to come back, and that's something Florida State can kind of put the feather in their cap with. You've got so much quality that decided to come back for another year. That's exactly what Claire Robbins said when we spoke to her before their first game against Texas A&M, that she credits a lot of her success because of the top quality of play around her. And, you know, she makes teammates better, but she she makes others better around her too. Here's Olsen. Pushes it up ahead, too heavy. They make, her, pass. they make her better, she makes them better. And, you know, when you have that continuity across the board throughout your, play, throughout your roster and the starting lineup, you're going to get your opportunities. And that's just the thing. This is the thing. She's gotten more opportunities as her career has progressed. Obviously, she's early on had a multitude of injuries that kept her from getting playing time. But she never, she never lacked talent. There's no question about that. It's just really blossomed very nicely here in these last couple seasons. Howell, the reigning Mac Herman Award winner. It's the collegiate game's best player. What up a ahead to Shao. What a tackle by Sanchez Corretto. We get another look at this. this is Sanchez Corretto from Puebla, Mexico, U national team circuit member. Bissell just sets it out to Zhao. Pretty good, but look at Corretto just flying in and, and controlling and trapping that ball at the same time was brilliant. Howell wants to switch the point of attack. And so she dumps it back to Flynn, who looked left, pivots, turns back to Madrill. One of the things Wes Hart has done here in, with his lineup, he's put Reyna Reyes up top as the ball squirts through. And the ball crosses the end line before Bissell could get there. What he's done is he's put Reyes up top alongside Ashlyn Sarepka. So he understands, you know, time is of the essence to get a goal. Just got to get that first one. And you got to put your playmakers in a spot where they can make an impact and find a way to the net. And that's where Reyes is. She's almost at the same level as Sarepka. Or she was starting on the back line or as the winger. Now she's up top. Throw in in favor of Bama. After this match against Florida State, Bama returns home for three straight contests in Tuscaloosa against Lamar, Southern Miss, and Samford. Florida State will play South Alabama on Thursday night here in Tallahassee before 
making a return trip of the home and home with Colorado. They'll head up to Boulder on August 29th. And then a premier matchup against the Florida Gators on a Thursday night before football season officially kicks off. You've got the Knowles and the Gators from the Plex right here in Tallahassee. That, that one is always fun. So much intensity. And Beata Olsen will be going up against her former team. We talked about the fireworks with Brooke Bollinger coming in off the bench for that game, making a big save. Can Bissell get on to the end of this one? Oh, well, that from Scaturo. And they're going to call, oh, they're going to award a goal kick. Last touched by Bissell. You see here the service from Clara Robbins, pretty decent, pretty good, actually. Oh, well done. It good did call. deflect off Bissell. Giving Bissell a shot, but just the nice job by Scaturo. Zhao couldn't get on to it. Pavlisko, though. Howell. Zhao looking for a 1-2. Howell it was held up in the run of play. Macy Clem. And now this is a dangerous opportunity for Florida State. Yeah, Clem had her back to the ball, so she didn't exactly know where it was, and Robbins was trying to be in pursuit, which will draw a set-piece restart for Florida State. And the foul will initially be given a little bit further away from where it seemed. Look like about, looks like about 12 occurred. yards outside of the 18, Ari, I'd guess. Just maybe around 30 yards toward the net. So you wonder, is this a to-goal opportunity for Zhao or is Nyswanger looking to put this towards the back post or on the six-yard line? Well, Nyswanger a lefty, and Zhao's pretty good with her left foot too, but she can be a solid right-footed hitter as well, kicker as well, so. It will be Zhao chipping it up ahead to the penalty spot. It curls to the outer half of the six-yard box where Crone has no problem with it. Zhao and Bissell trying to make the runs. Just a little bit too far ahead, in particular for Hal. A drill. Good shielding by Robbins to deny Clem a run and to keep possession. It's just so difficult, Ari, to keep the ball with against Florida State's, not just their back line, but just their midfielders are just doing such a good job with how much time they spend on the attack. They just do a superb job back on the defensive side to dispossess. And, you know, when you have number six back there, the Mac Herman Trophy winner, you're going to get good quality play and Yuji Zhao's on the watch list as well for that award. Claire Robbins being the all-star that she is. There's just no easy tasks when you're trying to build as the opponent against FSU. A drill. Direct long ball. Bissell running onto it. Scaturo gets there first. And Alabama now will try to build out of the back. That pressure from Florida State, though, pins you in. And good idea by Crone to relieve that pressure, knock it forward, but it will belong to Florida State. It's just every every moment with the ball for Alabama is critical, and just you have to have purpose in each pass that you do. And yeah, Mark Rikorian likened his press to what you see at Barcelona or at Liverpool. So he was watching the Liverpool match uh, just last week, and, and the way they were pressuring said how quickly we want to get back on the ball when we lose it. Reyes does well to turn her defender. And Alabama will have a throw. That's a nice job getting double teamed. Reyes forcing a throw in, allowing her team to maintain. And these are, this is just the moment here on these throw-ins where Bama just has not had a, has had good success or any sort, a lot of success at all keeping possession after a couple passes. It's like a stoppage in play, a little conversation happening here between Flynn and Sarepka. Might be some <laughs> shoving back and forth, not sure, but seem to be laughing it off a little bit, so.
I see Flynn from Arlington, Virginia. Sarepka from Cornelius, North Carolina, the graduate transfer. Sarepka did have a goal in her debut with the Crimson Tide against Jacksonville State. Bama finds themselves down 2-0 here. Bissell puts it into the box. Robbins tried to get her weight behind that header. And in the end, couldn't direct it towards goal. I think the challenge by Sanchez Corretto had something to do with that because Robbins holds up here as if she knows exactly where the ball is going to be. It's good service. She holds herself up, but Robbins just not able to square herself and get a solid header on it. So a little bit of a break there for the Tide. Mark Corian said before the season that it would be interesting to see how he would divvy up minutes because of all the competition that has been bred in the offseason. Heather Payne didn't start in the last match for Florida State. Yuji Zhao got the start today, but hadn't started really all of last season or the opening night game against Texas A&M. The battle between Roque and Justice will be interesting. And the depth is something that Florida State's very proud of. Last year, 18 out of the 41 goals coming from non-starters. Yuji Zhao had three of them herself, along with five assists off the bench for Florida State. And that quality depth is going to keep them with high stamina here, especially in the early part of the season when the heat is mo at its most brutal. Nice swanger, once a long range attempt, glances off the post. Shades of her goal against Santa Clara in the national title game. That one found the net after glancing off the inside of the post. That is a dangerous left foot for number two all the way from and California. She, and then she comes in as an inserter right there just to dispossess. You seen nice longer here in this second half. Aria really show her defensive skills on display. You know, she you see her playing a little bit back than what she's normally playing. Doing a nice job all all around on offense and defense. Howell. Back to Nye Swanger. She wants another one. <laughs> she wants to no tee it up again. From one lefty to another. Carl, service towards the back post. Now Bissell. Bissell plays it. Crone picks it out of the sky. Trying to feed Olsen on the far side. But good presence of mind by Crone of intercepting. Yeah, you know Nye Swanger, especially after Thursday's game against Texas A&M, wants to put one in the net. She had a she had one go right off the crossbar around the six yard box. Was wide open, just a little too elevated. But she is a sharpshooter, as are many players on this FSU roster, as we've already seen today, Maria Alagoa being one. Many of them can just tee it up if they have the look they want. Madrill. Flynn. To Howell. The wayward pass. But Flynn able to chase it down. And Holes will start all the way from the back now with Justice. Thursday night, right back here on ACC Network Extra. South Alabama, Florida State. Right here, the number one ranked team at six o'clock against another fro from the state of Alabama. Bissell onto her left, service ball, it's a good one. Robbins turns outside of the boot, couldn't catch it cleanly. Ball still in play, this service and the finish. Three goals for Florida State. And Beata Olsen's first in Tallahassee as a Seminole. Triples the Seminole lead.
Robbins got the initial service, couldn't put her left foot on it. But she did a remarkable job of recovering and then working her way back to try and find the numbers up in front. And Beata Olsen, who had another, who like Jenna Nicewanger, had one go off the crossbar in her first game against Texas A&M. This time, no siree. She puts a one touch on it, an easy goal, and the Knolls are rolling at three nothing. And Beata Olsen, seven goals for the Gators last year, five assists. And adds her first for the Seminoles. Member of the Swedish youth national team circuit. And in her second game in Tallahassee, she puts her first ball in the net. And she had those seven goals in seven games. She is a premier goal scorer here on the college level. And she's going to certainly be one to keep your eye on out, uh, out on <laughs> to keep your eye on throughout the season. Just another playmaker for Florida State. No short shortage of them here on this roster that will prove lethal, especially when ACC play comes in. Yeah, Marco Corian very excited about what she can do in Tallahassee. Denoles saying goodbye to Kristen McFarland, a player who over 50 starts in her career in Tallahassee. And now they turn to Olsen from Enkoping, Sweden, five foot five sophomore. Another direct ball, Madrill. Just caught out of the sky by a defender. He had Nyswanger and Robbins running forward. As was Olsen. Seminoles just make you pay when you just do not have the quality to start a possession on a throw-in. See, I saw Felicia Knox trying to control and just could not handle the bounce, and now Florida State just working their way right back up. Bissell. Powell. Pavlisko looking for Robbins. I think she was also trying to tell Emma Bissell to work her way up as well. Now onto the pitch now for Florida State will be Jody Brown. Robbins will get a breather. Jody Brown. Jody Brown really burst onto the scene in the fall for FSU. Really in the spring, it started to slow down for her, couldn't find a goal, as the Seminoles opted not to play any games. Chow's ball to Olsen, Howell. But the Noles opted not to play any regular season games in the spring, instead training and scrimmaging to get ready for what would be an NCAA tournament run to the national championship game. But in that fall ACC only schedule, Jody Brown was just a menace. Her speed, too much to handle for many defenders. Sixteen games, five goals, one assist, tying for the team lead. And as one of the young bright stars in CONCACAF for the Jamaican national team. Helped Jamaica qualify for the World Cup a couple of years back. Yeah, she just brings just another element of speed. It's just another depth player for Mark Rikorian. Just when you think, oh, okay, you got okay, Claire Robbins takes a breather. Okay, maybe we get a maybe we maybe we get a little bit of an easier time. No, not at all. Jody Brown's just gonna make you really work on that back line and in the midfield. Another substitution for Florida State. Another member of CONCACAF, Bermuda, where Leilani Nesbitt plays for her country. She's onto the pitch now. Zhao 
Lefty service, back post, Carl. Chases the ball down before it reaches the end line. Three goals for Florida State today. Two in the first half, one in the second. And a big time tumble for Jenna Nyswanker, who's laughing it off. They have Kundi coming in hard, trying to get the ball back, and <laughs> just a shoulder tackle. Maybe some, <laughs> some of the football coaches around here might be <laughs> appreciative of that one, but not in this game. Trevor, she had a goal in her Jacksonville, uh, in her Alabama debut against Jacksonville State. Coach gave us uh, some descriptive words, and the two that he wanted us to write down were strong and powerful, and uh, those were all in display. And you could tell she has a very aggressive mentality right there. She doesn't mess around. She wants to win the ball. Good one-on-one. -on -one. She's got to be a little careful in those moments. Direct ball forward, Zhao. Couldn't get onto it. Touched back. Crone had to do well there, does. Just right over the head of Bissell. <laughs> it could have been disastrous for Alabama if it was any lower. Bissell may have had a head opportunity right back towards the net. Zhao trying to flick it onto a teammate, a whistle and a stoppage of play. I believe advantage will be given to Florida State, so they'll bring the ball back to where Pavlisko was knocked down. All just lining up right on the 18 line. Looks like Zhao will be the only one behind the ball to deliver the service. Zhao, Howell races onto it. Tries to bike it into, a, <laughs> into the six yard <laughs> box for a teammate. Well, I, I can honestly say I've not seen Jalen Howell pull that rabbit out of the hat just yet. I mean, she's well outside. I mean, she's outside of the 18 for this one to happen. But just another, another one of her tricks and her skill sets being showcased. But that one, I got to say, that one right there, that sliding tackle is what we're used to seeing. Just the multi-talented Jalen Howell. Just you never know what exactly you're going to get now. Yeah, won the Mac Herman Award last season, and Howell, who's had some call-ups to the senior USA Women's National Team. Learning from the likes of Julie Ertz, Lindsey Horan, Carly Lloyd, who's played in midfield in her career before. I mean, just a wealth of knowledge that she had access to. And I think the United States women's national team will have a youth movement here soon because a lot of those veterans that have been there for several World Cups and Olympic Games have, are, are starting to leave. And I think it's an opportunity for the likes of Jalen Howell and those in those U20s, U23 teams to really prove their worth and get a chance to work up the next couple years. There's Brown to Howell. And Trevor, the ACC, a slew of talent playing for the U.S. Women's National Team. You can go down the list if you'd like. This ball in. Abyssal's going to want it back. Well, here's another player that you might see on the international stage in not too in the not too distant future. I mean, Bissell kind of had a good showcase in that first game against Texas A&M. Had a couple of good quality shot opportunities. I think we'll have another hydration break here. 19 minutes to play in this one. Knowles lead at 3-0, and so we'll step aside. When we come back, we'll wrap it up. Final 19 minutes from Tallahassee, where Florida State leads by three.
Florida State three, Alabama nil. About 19 minutes to go. That man right there about to get win number 291 of his seminal career, 459 if he gets this one in his overall career. He is approaching some milestones. One of the top five coaches all time already in the game in terms of wins, wins percentage. And he's done it in just 17 seasons. It's not like it's been 35 years. Mark Rokorian has set the standard. And Wes Hart said as much. He said, look, <laughs> there's not a whole lot Mark does wrong. I mean, he has set the bar for everybody else. And if you want to have a chance to compete with Florida State, they show you exactly what you have to do to be on that level. And at the end of the day, great coaches, but he's a great recruiter. And he finds ways to get great players. And both guys... Wes Hart, Mark Rikorian told us the key is players. Good players make smart coaches. Yeah, I mean, he uses his time so efficiently and well. And he doesn't, I mean, you would imagine here, Ari, just in the state of Florida, you're going to find talent all the time. But he doesn't rest at that. You know, he goes international. He wants to find other players and clubs that, you know, asking, you know, who wants to come over here to the United States? You know, who wants to come here? And if you do, I'm going to make you better. And I'm going to make you a top quality player. It's It's within his system, but... There is no shortage of talent that wants to come over here to the United States. And he has a nice way of gravitating them toward Tallahassee. Alabama, a rare opportunity deep in Florida State's third. It'll be a goal kick. Head to your point, Trevor, exactly as we see a substitution coming. For Alagoa. Florida State. Alagoa back into the game. It'll be Alagoa back. Who has the highlight of the day? No question about that. From Portugal, which strengthens our point. Uh, before, Mark Corian said, before I got the Jalen Howells of the world, it took about 10 to 12 years to be able to get top American talent to come to Tallahassee. I had to look all around the world and, and build and use my connections internationally. Florida State looked far and wide to be able to build this program. And, and the international taste and the flavor and, and the essence has remained strong with Krikorian, but now he's starting to get some of those elite top five players that are from the United States. Although Alagoa and Jody Brown, a couple of internationals. This opportunity, does Florida State have four? They do not. Shot by Lynch coming from the outside, and you just see it. I mean, this is internationally, and you see Carl and Zhao who have been here and started in every season that they've been. Now you bring in Olsen and Bissell, EY, Brown, Nesbeth Payne, and Alagoa <laughs> making her herself known today with that tremendous goal she had outside the 18. No they doubt. all want to come here. Obviously, they want playing time, but they understand that, you know, Coach Krikorian and Mike Bristol, who's their goalkeeper's coach, and Morinao Imaizumi, who coached for team, who was an assistant for Team Japan in these most recent Olympics. You see a hard tackle by Reyna Reyes. That might be a little bit of a frustration move by Reyes against. Jalen Howell. Yeah, way too aggressive by Reyes. And Howell grabbing at the back of her right ankle, but walking it off. And those two, Trevor, might meet up again in some World Cup qualifying matches. I was just about to say, <laughs> U.S. versus Mexico. to shout out the men's U.S. national team. Back-to-back -back wins against Mexico. In the Gold Cup and in the CONCACAF Nations League. Yeah, big moment for the men's national team to get those quality wins against Mexico and on the big stage. Those are the ones you build up for in the CONCACAFs and the Gold Cups. You see more aggressive play by Bama. <laughs> At some point, they just, you know, they got to they're doing everything they can now to just deny Florida State any more opportunities. It's so tough. Just proves what high quality Florida State has all the way around the board. 15 minutes to play, Nesbeth. It's a good ball to the back post. And Flynn rising. 
Got to head on to it. Florida State, though, 13 shots. Three have found the net. Although one was an own goal by Bollinger in the first half. You just see how well Florida State traps you, and then they just work their way back out, knowing the ball's probably going to their back line or a player nearby. They just do a great job of knowing where they are the pitch at all times and getting right back to where they need to be to restart things as they work up into the opponent's half of the field. And Trevor, you and I have had the pleasure of talking to a, a lot of coaches that face Mark Krokorian, most unsuccessful. But those who have been successful, they, they tell you the secret is you got to have some great individual talent that when you do win the ball can turn that short spell into something magical. Santa Clara did. North Carolina has in the past. UCLA has found ways in the past. Yeah, UCLA came in here a couple years ago, Ari, in the final eight, the elite eight of the NCAA tournament. It actually just put a clinic on against Florida State. One of the, one of the more surprising outcomes that this Florida State team has seen at home, and they do not lose at home often. And it's, it was pretty stunning the way they lost that game. UCLA came out really strong in the first half, so it's just really rare to see. Brown turns on the Jets. Crone read it well. Scouting report was understood by the Bama keeper, and she was quick off her line. You got three total substitutions coming in now, two for Bama, one for Florida State. It'll be Ronnie Y in for FSU. Macy Clem re-entering the game for the Tide. As is Brooke Steer, the forward. Freshman from Dexter, Michigan. And Trevor Mark Krokorian told us before, look, we've got a lot of players that are probably ready to play pro soccer now. And they just decided to come back to school and, and play for us. And he said that was a blessing. He said, look, we're, this is the most veteran team I've ever had. And said there is coaching that him and his staff have to do. But for the most part, the, the ladies really run themselves. And when you have Jalen Howell kind of as that voice of reason in the locker room and on the pitch, you've got Gabby Carl, who has a gold medal in her back pocket. Not a whole lot the coaching staff has to do. No, it just it makes your job a little, quite simply, much easier in a lot of ways. You still have to keep them focused, and I, but I think they all understand that. They all understand what they need to do. They feed off each other very, very well. Nesbeth, flag one up. So now the question for Florida State becomes, I was having a conversation with some of the media members in Tallahassee who, who cover the team so well. Really, for Florida State, it's always about the postseason. I mean, regular season, FSU's 99% chance going to be, at worst, a two seed. 75% of the time, they're a one seed playing in Tallahassee all the way up until the College Cup. They've earned that right almost every year. And so the question becomes in postseason, can you put together five or six performances in a row that are quality? Can you finish those chances from possession? And really, until the Sweet 16 or Elite Eight, Really, it's the Elite Eight and on. You don't really find a team that can match Florida State player for player or be able to apply that type of pressure back to the Seminoles. I think you're going to, later on in the season, Ari, I think you're going to get that chance even before the ACC tournament even begins. You take a look at their schedule in October alone. You get at Clemson. You get home games against Syracuse and Miami. But then you go on the road to Virginia Tech. You go on the road to North Carolina, on the road at Duke. You know, and then home for Virginia, who's given them fits in the past as well. North Carolina speaks to themselves. Duke's a good quality team. That October schedule, especially late when they have three road games in a row, Virginia Tech, North Carolina, and Duke, we're going to see exactly how Florida State, if they get tested, can they match that? I, they, obviously, they're the number one team in the country. They can face anybody and and win. But those will be the games that you really get an idea of how Florida State, how good they can be in the postseason. Then once the season ends against Virginia, they go right into the ACC tournament, and then the NCAA tournament begins. Howell and now Brown. And you mentioned it, Trevor, the ACC's loaded. I mean, they, the top 10, top 25 was announced earlier, and the top 10, you got five ACC teams. 
as Carl runs on to this ball. And it's deflected away. Yeah, Clemson starting off the year at number seven alone. Florida State's going to have road tests at Clemson, at North Carolina, at Duke. Those are all teams ranked. Yeah, you got three in the top five with FSU, UNC, and Virginia. The SEC no slouch, by the way. Texas A&M, number eight in the country. And then Arkansas, US, uh, South Carolina, Vandy, and Ole Miss, also in the top 25 in the SEC as Howell's day is most likely done. Amelia Horton coming in to get her first action of the season. You just substitute one U.S. national team member <laughs> for a player who's been in the U.S. national team camps as well. Amazing what Mark Krikorian has built. In fact, Horton's the number 11 forward according to top drawer soccer rankings coming in as a freshman. So <laughs> the talent just is plentiful and, and sprouting all over the place. Good cut by Carl. This ball towards the center of the six. Picked out of the sky by Crone. And in front of us, we're seeing a couple of droplets of light rain falling. It was in the forecast for this afternoon. Hopefully we can make it for the final eight and a half minutes. You know, I mean, as a former athlete myself, Aria, there is nothing worse than going onto the field with wet grass. So luckily for these players, they're going to get off the grass with the rain coming down on the pitch. There is nothing There is nothing worse than just feeling mugginess and just wetness in your cleats. So the fact that they'll get off the pitch after this is a good feeling. Final eight minutes from Tallahassee where Florida State's primed to go to 2-0. And be a perfect 2 0 against the SEC to start the year. Mentioned it earlier, but the Knowles will be right back here against South Alabama on August 26th. That's next Thursday. And then a fun trip to Boulder to take on Colorado on August 29th, but before returning home for a third SEC matchup with the Florida Gators, the rivalry. Brown. EY, Horton gets a foot on it, first career goal. Amelia Horton, and it's four for the home side today in Tallahassee. Check that on the roster. Gianna Mitchell into the match for Florida State. The transfer from Boston College, her first goal with Florida State. The attacking defender, transfer as you said, the former Eagle flying in, making it a 4-0 win. <laughs> it looks, at least that's what it appears to be. Had a little bit of time in the tournament, but getting some time here to run things down and Gianna Mitchell finds the score sheet. She snuck onto the field, didn't she? I didn't even see her walk into the game. A redshirt senior. So it'll be Mitchell, the former Eagle, ACC to ACC. Apologize to Amelia Horton, who hopefully will get her first Seminole goal at some point. Mitchell did appear for the Seminoles in the NCAA tournament for a handful of minutes last year in the five matches she appeared in. And just another veteran leader. You know, yeah. Just another person who has some experience looking for maybe some more playing time here at Florida State. Last time the Seminoles scored four goals was on this home field against the Duke Blue Devils. As you can see, I mean, Mitchell's up top. I mean, she's almost placed as a forward. You can see her, here she goes running on again. Pass with way too much weight, too heavy. As now Tana Sanchez Coretto hitting the deck, but looks like she's waving off assistance, so she'll be okay. But yeah, Mitchell looks like they might experiment a little bit here, Ari. I mean, she she's listed as a defender, but she is an attacker. She has an attacking mindset. And so she kind of, in a way, she kind of reminds you of Kristen McFarland, in a way, she's a she's a tall, she's very tall, almost at six foot. She can really work her way and 
be aggressive with the ball. Just another element that Florida State can show. Five minutes to play. Florida State has dropped a four-piece on Alabama. And I'm not sure revenge was the right word because it's been quite a few years and not really a rivalry between the Knowles and the Tide in soccer. But the only other meeting was back in 2017 between these two schools in history. And Alabama knocked off number six Florida State on that day 1-0. And Florida State making no mistake this afternoon on its home turf. Now it just comes down for Bama to try and get some good feelings and finish strong before they return home, as you said, Aria. How quickly you can be humbled. 4-0 over Jacksonville State on Thursday. Turn right around a couple days later. And you're getting beat 4-0. Maybe Alabama can find something, as you mentioned, Trevor, to be excited about heading back to Tuscaloosa. Got a couple of minutes to do it. Yeah, I know West Hart's team will certainly learn from this experience. It's I mean it's just it's just tough sledding when you I mean Jacksonville team Jacksonville State's a good squad but they I mean obviously they're just nowhere near the the level of of skill and and quality of Florida State so you go on the road alone it's tough to win here you just get a, you just get a good test and then, you know that's that's sometimes when you what you do in non-conference you have to test yourself and you have to put yourself up against other teams from around the country and with out of conference to really see what you're made of. And they battled hard today. It's just, you know, tough to match this Florida State squad. I think they will value this experience of knowing what they have to do to improve. It's a good it's a good chance to really see what they can improve on as the season progresses and they get closer to SEC play. Here comes Alagoa. Alagoa finds some space into the 18. Has Horton. Horton cuts back to her right. Mitchell showed in the box for support. Oh, what a dispossession by Horton. And Horton continuing her strong play. Righty service. The finish. Blocked by Crone. Alagoa again. <laughs> Looking for a double. Looking for a two. She certainly got a flair for the dramatic. This shot, Crone able to scoop it up off one bounce. Lynch with the shot, but excellent sequence. First, the dispossession by Horton. This is what you have. This is what you have to be aware of. No matter who's on the pitch for Florida State, you are going to get challenged. Settles things down towards the end line. The one timer. Excellent positioning by Crone to keep it four 0 And just again, when you just when you just are off a little bit, Florida State just does an excellent job of recognizing where the ball is going, and they can just capitalize and swarm in. Horton goes down, juked herself out. Looks like she might have caught some turf under her nose. She's able to pop back up, no problem. Mitchell, nice piece Good of work there. Good skill by Mitchell. Funny enough, Gianna Mitchell actually, Trevor, scored against Florida State on this field. The last time Boston College and FSU met up in Tallahassee, it was a 4-3 thriller for the Seminoles, but Mitchell found the net for the Eagles. Yeah, that was a wild game, and you don't see that much scoring back and forth in games here in Tallahassee. That was a thriller for the crowd here at Florida State. The Eagles are coming back here in, the, in September. So another lot of uh, reunion games this season involving Florida State, both on their current roster and, as we've seen today with Brooke Bollinger, on their opponent's rosters. EY. EY. 
Mitchell on her left. We'll dribble it out to the corner. Flag at the edge of the box. Oh, now Lynch. dumps it out to Carl. Lynch was really wanting that ball from EY. She was flying in towards the middle of the 18. Typically, players love to be rewarded for the runs that they make. It takes a lot out of you. As EY up the center of the pitch, down the seam, and now out to Horton. Heavy, heavy pass, and Horton couldn't catch up to it. Seven, and the six, final few ticks five, off the four, clock three, here in Tallahassee three, where Florida State nine, moves to a perfect 2-0 on the year. Two SEC teams up, two SEC teams down. FSU four, Alabama nil. And pleasantries exchanged between Brooke Bollinger and her former head coach Mark Krikori and Wes Hart. Also back on his former stomping grounds where he was an assistant coach. But on this day, Mark Krikorian and Florida State knocked off Alabama in what ended up being kind of a laugher. The Noles scored two in the first, two in the